Hello, welcome to Paleo Greenbird. I'm Greenbird, and today I'm going to talk about a subject that I get asked about quite a bit. I've already done a video on it. It's poison ivy. How to identify it, how to avoid it, how to take care of it once you got it. Um, and it's, you know, starting with the identification, it's really, really simple. Once you learn how to identify poison ivy, you'll see it everywhere you go. You'll never be able to unsee it, I guess. So uh, you hear the corny phrases, you know, leaves of three, let them be. There's a lot of plants with three leaves. What does that mean? You know, leaves like mittens, itch like the dickens. Uh, so what are you looking for? Leaves that look like mittens? Uh, yes and no, but it's what's really important is to understand the what the plant looks like and how to how those phrases sort of came to be. So poison ivy does have three leaves, of course, and its leaves sort of look like mittens. But it's important to understand why. It's because they're asymmetrical, so they're not. They're not symmetrical, whereas most leaves will be kind of spear-shaped or, um, I guess, leaf-like, for lack of a better term. Whereas poison ivy, it won't be the same on both sides. Instead of being an oval shape, one shape will kind of have like a thumb that comes off of it and comes back in. So that's the best way to identify poison ivy, is look for leaves that do not look symmetrical. If you have, if you see something on the ground, there's three leaves, and the two on the side, and sometimes even the one on the front, uh, aren't completely symmetrical. Chances are you've got yourself poison ivy, and it can look really different depending upon what time of year it is, how old it is, you know, what stage it's in. Um, in the fall, oftentimes it will get a dark red color. It might look really greasy looking, but it doesn't always. Sometimes it has a flat color to it too, like in the summertime. And um, it can be in a vine. I've seen poison ivy in a vine that is th thick around as a 50 cent piece rolling up, wrapping up a tree. And uh, if you don't know what you're looking at, you can touch that vine. That vine can make you extremely itchy, uh, just as much as the leaves do. And, uh, you know, you, if you're landscaping and you're chopping into it, you know, cutting brush down, things like that, it's easy to, it's easy to miss. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go outside without further ado. We're going to find ourselves some poison ivy, maybe a couple of other plants just for some fun. And, um, yeah, so we'll go do that. So stay with me, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so here we go. We have a nice classic example of poison ivy. Pretty hard to mistake. And when I say the asymmetrical leaves, look at those side leaves. I don't know if this is catching this or not. But see how there's like a little hook that comes off of both of those side leaves? They're not symmetrical on either one of these. A lot of times it's a little bit more pronounced than this. But you can tell they're just not the same shape. They're not symmetrical. That is a fine example of some poison ivy. And we have some more over here. Okay, see how those leaves do not look the same on both sides? I suppose it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see it. If you look, especially on that one right there. It's got a little, like a little thumb coming out. See that? And you can see in this case, they don't look greasy. They don't look oily or anything like that. But I guarantee you, you touch that and you'll be itching that is for sure let's see if we can find some more check this out you can really see the uh, common plantains they're going to seed they're starting to go to seed that is the common plantain Plantago Major, very easy to identify. The veins run north and south. They come out in kind of a rosette type of pattern. I think that's what they call it. Another, another good patch right over there. You can see the seed stems coming off. I mean, they're really, once you learn how to identify them, they're pretty difficult to mistake for anything else.
Okay, right here, you can see that's poison ivy. Doesn't have the thumbs like they like they always do, but you can tell. Look how asymmetrical those leaves are. They just don't look the same. They're not the same shape on either side. So you have to be careful. It doesn't always look like the thumb. Can't always rely on the mittens. They're just leaves that don't look the same. There's another patch over here. Down there at the bottom, right there. Okay, so now that we know how to identify poison ivy, how do we avoid it? What do we do if uh, we're exposed to it? Um, avoiding it is difficult. Um, you know, if you spend any time outside, or if you have an outside job, or you camp, you hike, you're just bound to come in contact with it. Um, you know, it's one of those things you just have to sort of accept. Uh, other than using common sense and avoiding it when you see it. If you do come in contact with it, the best thing you can do is you can take your clothes, um, you know, isolate those into a, a different batch of laundry. Don't do them with the same laundry that you do. And there are different things that you can do to, uh, you know, treat your clothes. You can wash them differently. But let's talk about, like, if you get it on your skin. The thing is, is uh, Poison Ivy has an oil on there, and um, you can look it up if you're looking for all the scientific names for it. I'm not sure I can pronounce it properly, so I'm not going to try to, but um, it has an oil on there that that's what spreads. When people say, you know, don't itch your poison ivy because it'll spread, it has absolutely nothing to do with the blisters, the poison ivy rash that you get. That that rash is not spreadable. It's not contagious. It has, it's because the oils are likely still on your skin, and they could be on your skin even after you take a shower, after you wash your hands, um, it's a really, um, you know, um, it's an oil that just has a strong fortitude to stay stuck to you. So you want to think of it as if you took axle grease or, you know, butter or whatever and spread it all over your arms. Now try and wash it off. You can't just rinse that off. That's not going to come off. Uh, you need a, a strong amount of friction to get those oils off. Some, so some sort of a soap that maybe has a little bit of a grit to it or just continuous washing over and over and over. You can use the uh, Dawn, which is obviously anti-grease, we all know that. Uh, but you're going to need to do it more than once. So you're going to need to continue to use that friction. Don't just rely on the water. Really scrub, 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 scrub. And that should get the oils off of your skin. It should prevent it from spreading. Uh, the poison ivy rash itself it shouldn't last long. For most people, it lasts under a week. Um, the there are some herbal uh, remedies that you can use. Jewelweed is an amazing uh, cure for poison ivy. It helps tremendously. It has, I think it has natural antihistamines in it. Um, <clears throat> there are a few other plants too. Actually, the common plantain can be used for skin irritations. It's not quite as uh, you know, good for anti-itching anti type of things. It's, more, it's an anti-inflammatory, but I don't know if it works as quite as well for things that are itchy and irritative, but, but jewelweed definitely does, and jewelweed usually grows near poison ivy. So if you happen to contract poison ivy and you know where you contracted it, take a look, see if there's jewelweed that's um, in the area, and maybe you can make yourself some sort of a little concoction. You can crush up the leaves and just rub them right on your skin, um, or you can look up online. There are a lot of different, different ways that you can use that. So I um, hope you found this useful. So. Thanks for joining me. Please share, please like, please subscribe, and please have a fantastic day. Paleo Greenberg signing out.